This video is brought to you by WinWing. Hey, good day everybody and welcome back to the Air Warfare Group. This is Juice. Today's video is going to be about the aircrew flight equipment upgrade that was on the F-16 Viper recently within the last month. And it's actually been on my to-do list for a while, but I got tied up with the Flight Simulator Expo uh, down in Las Vegas last week. So I've been with planning and prep and the travel time and everything like that and networking with other uh, YouTube presenters on the uh, on the trip. I have been busy. To give you guys an update about that, Bogey Dope, myself, uh, Prime from Aviation Plus, and Tuvas are all going to get together and do a group discussion this weekend. Uh, so look for that video coming out soon. If you guys find this video informative uh, and enjoyable to watch, please give it a thumbs up. It helps other people in the community see it and learn about the actual F-16 flight equipment. Now on this video here, I'm going to talk about my history in the aircrew protection, aircrew safety and survival world, maintaining and providing uh, and inspecting the aircrew flight equipment. That was what I did when I first came in before I started getting into the survival and the rescue world. Um, this is not me. This guy is much younger, but basically I did what his job was back when it was called aircrew life support. Now they call it AFE or aircrew flight equipment in the Air Force. I'm going to talk specifically about the F-16 flight model in this and talk a little bit about the history. And I'm going to break that up into two parts. So you guys remember I did a little teaser video about a month ago showing the upcoming uh, helmet effects uh, with the motion and everything, but also the updated gear and everything. And although it's, it's still a work in progress, it's not perfect, it's not complete, uh, I'm going to tell you guys about some of the equipment you're seeing and what it does in the real life. And if you're an AFE or a rigger in the Navy or Marine Corps uh, and have worked on this or another sister service, go ahead and put your two cents in there too. We love when everybody shares in the comments. First thing I did when the update came out is I went out and flew the Viper with it to check out the motion and also to see what kind of detailing they have. As you can see in this picture here, they did pretty good. I'm going to use my mouse if you can see that in the video here. I'm going to come down. These are the bayonet receivers that are mounted to the helmet, and these are the mask restraint um, basically attachment points. But they go through and they have these little clicks. If you pull on this thing on the bottom here, it comes out. And that's how they lower the, the, the mask on one side. Uh, the Navy takes theirs off on both sides. The Air Force, we usually just had the guys take it off on this one side and let it hang over here. Uh, but what you're seeing here is the Combat Edge mask. This came out when I was working on F-16s in Korea at Kunsan. And we actually did the conversion from the 12P mask to this, M I believe it's the MBU-20P mask. Correct me if I'm wrong but you guys can confirm that if you like. Uh, this is the MBU-20P mask. It goes down here with the Crew-94 terminal block uh, connector, which takes ship oxygen source coming out of the bottom here, right below his wrist, right there, takes it up and puts it into the chest vest, which goes up here and it helps provide inflation to the chest and also puts in uh, pressurized oxygen to the mass to feed it to the pilot. And also I'll show you another thing when it comes to the uh, PP PPG, pressure breathing for G system that involves a bladder in the back of the helmet. Now, one of the things that you'll notice right away if you're, uh, if you're an AFE or a rigger working in the Navy, you'll notice right away that this right here, this elbow piece right here, this is where they would connect up when they get in the airplane to the little tube that goes to the emergency oxygen cylinder because the oxygen cylinder is mounted on the seat. It stays with the seat. And that's why when you have a high altitude ejection, you don't get pilot seat separation in, uh, until you get down below 14,500 feet plus or, plus or minus 500 or 1,000 feet. Uh, so that's not modeled correctly right there. I'll put a note in it for ED to look at this and possibly have that hooked up to the emergency oxygen cylinder, which we, for short, we call it the Amoxel. So you got this set up right here and, um, and it hooks onto the, the harness right there. Now these are the parachute canopy releases. When we first came out with the F-16, we used to have the frost releases and then, uh, then we went to the Coke releases and these are made by Coke and Sons. And you can look at that. Uh, if you look up close, it's got some pretty good detailed writing on it. And there's some of the views you can see it and everything. Uh, this is right here. This is the LPU 9P horse collar flotation device. When I first joined the Air Force and worked on F-15s, we used to have the underarm type that looked like little underarm packs on both sides. Came out like a U-shape, went in the front and the back like this mouse is moving right here. But now this helps keep, helps keep the pilot's head above water uh, if they're unconscious when they go in. I should also mention 
that we have uh, UWARS and CWARS uh, devices, depending on what service you're in. U UWARS is Universal Water Activated Release System. And what that does is if you're in freshwater, if you parachute over a lake, or if you land in the ocean, the freshwater, the salt water will create an electrical charge that will fire the release and it will separate you from your parachute canopy so you don't get drugged to death and drown. Uh, I won't go into too detail on this, but you can see they've got their survival vest on. That's that tan thing underneath there. Uh, typically, they'll have a, a, a pocket for the holster, uh, a holster pocket for the pistol. Uh, back in my day, we started out with the 38 Special, and then we went to uh, then we went to the 9 millimeter, the Breda M9, for the Air Force. Uh, and this is all hooked up. These when the pilot uh, bails out and goes through their post bailout checklist. They would pull these red knobs here uh, before they enter the water to inflate their LPUs life preserver unit, but there's also a water activated device in there that will inflate it for them if they go into the drink. And again, he's wearing his flight suit. He's got his gloves on. This guy's not going to get burned at all in a flash fire, except maybe his eyebrows. So moving along, let's go to the next slide. So I'm looking at this angle here and you can see the detail. Look at that. The this is this is where the microphone goes in right here. As a matter of fact, this is the mic bracket. This is the mic cable that goes along and comes from the ship supply. That's that black line, black cable you see going around the auction hose there. These are called convolutions right here. This is uh, uh, to, to, to give it a little bit of a, a subtle, a supple flexibility so the hose can move around a little bit. And it also helps give it some rigidity so it doesn't collapse if you push pressure against it and everything. So it's almost like a little rib system in there. And everything but the communication system comes up and it splits right here in this little t junction right here it's almost like a y junction but the y junction this part goes up and goes to the microphone and the other part that goes up goes up back here and you can see it on the side where the mouse is right here above the life preserver on the right side as we're looking at his left right there is where the uh, communications goes in for the ear cups for the headset you can see that this is the cable that goes up right here in that yellow part. It's really, it looks exactly like this. As a matter of fact, this yellow sleeve here has some brand or marketing information on it from the company, but it's also designed to give it some extra rigidity or at least a little bit better insulation when it rubs up against stuff like in the helmet and everything. Here he is with the visor down, coming down, and that's another nice animation that we have in there. Uh, and again, it's not perfect. But this is kind of how it looks. We're going to talk about the PPG or the pressure breathing for G. And that's the oxygen delivery for the chest and for the helmet and for the mask. Is for was actually invented for the F-16 for the high G, 9G environment of the Viper, uh, and it eventually made sense to put it in other aircraft like the F-15, any you know the F-18. Anybody that is flying high G aircraft can benefit from this. And what it does is it allows, it doesn't really allow you to go out and sustain more G's without being in G-tolerant shape. What it does is it allows you to go out and sustain more G's for a longer time uh, and do more sorties in a day without getting as fatigued as it is when you're trying to do the anti-G straining maneuver uh, or AGSM to keep from blacking out from G-lock. And so this was really put together in the early days. I was I was in the Air Force before this came out, and we did the conversion in 1992. I retired in 2002, so it had been out about 10 years. But this came out, uh, it's actually, when I was a young airman, probably in my first four years of the service, I used to go to conferences where we would attend the new equipment seminars or trade symposiums on what was coming out, and this was in the works during that. So this is something that was, it took 10 years to develop and everything. Uh, there's a lot of evolution going on right now. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the helmet-mounted queuing system was not out when I came out, uh, when I left the service in 2002, it was just about to come out. I think it came out in 2004, 2005, but the, and it was, and it was actually a prototype for a long time, but we'll talk a little bit about that, but we'll mostly talk about the PPG and then uh, we'll, and I've already touched on some of the other flight crew equipment. Again, F-16 guys, this was like mandatory for them first, and then it eventually made it into other units and everything. So first, let's talk about the PPG or pressure breathing for G, which is mostly the air and oxygen system. This is a schematic diagram from the GR, that's the Greece, uh, Greece Air Force, or Hellenic Air Force, F-16 CJ-1. Uh, this is the big, you know, 900 page or 800 page or 500 page manual, depending on what aircraft you are, that 
tells the pilot everything about their system. So you can see this right here. This is the emergency oxygen supply bottle right here. We call this the Amoxel, the emergency oxygen cylinder. This is where it would hook into that elbow piece right there. And this right here goes to the vest connector. This is what pumps it up. And when we first had this system come out, came out when the first system was first available, depending on the sortie profile, it was optional if you wore the chest vest or not. And some units don't use the chest vest. The ones that don't do the, the 9G environment usually don't do the chest vest. Uh, the mask was really an integrate design for pulling G's because the old mask used to have the hose come straight out the nose away from the pilot, which put a lot of arm leverage on the front. So when you pull G's, that would pull the mask down and off the person's face. Now, how they compensated for that natural G effect in a positive G environment when you pull the stick back and it pulls your mask down is they added a helmet bladder in the back of the helmet right from about where the mouse is right here. Coming down here, we used to have to cut out two layers, possibly three layers of the helmet liner and to accommodate the extra thickness for the bladder and the bladder went in there and what happens is is when that bladder would inflate in the back of your head it would actually draw the mass tight tighter to your face when you're pulling G's and it's all integrated into the G sensing system so just like the pilot's G suit that they wear on their legs um, that inflates during the during high G maneuvers so does this it, it forces pressure in the mask and also forces pressure into the bladder behind to keep a good seal and to force air into the pilot's lungs or oxygen in the pilot's lungs during these G maneuvers so it helps avoid G lock it's it's not a replacement for good training uh, good technique and good physical fitness on the part of the pilot the Jehemix connection is this big square thing here and this is what the pilot plugs into now, all of these connectors, whether it be the Crew 94P, the emergency oxygen cylinder uh, connection, all of these are on quick disconnects. So when the pilot ejects, they, the stuff that stays in the aircraft will disconnect fast there. And then the, uh, when, the, when the person has man seat separation, where the pilot is below a certain altitude to get kicked out of the seat and the parachute deploys, that also has a quick disconnect for that oxygen tube, uh, the oxygen hose that goes into the emergency seat uh, cylinder so and I won't go into much detail if you guys have any questions just definitely put them in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you hey but before we go into the helmet mounted queuing system let's watch a short message from our sponsor Wenwing Now, I don't have any practical or functional experience using the helmet mounted queuing system outside of DCS. Um, however, I do have access to the information and have access to technicians that have actually let me demonstrate it and see it and everything. And again, like I said, this system is constantly evolving, being updated by Collins Aerospace and other providers within the subsystems. But I'll give you the basics. You can see that these are all like technical terms. You got the, the blind mate connector. Uh, which and it has a day module like this is removable they can take it off if they don't need it or the night adapter they can take this off and put the night one on and it allows it to accommodate NVGs or night vision goggles this is what the system kind of looks like when you look at it for the interconnections and then it goes into the aircraft and that connection I showed you in the previous slides the symbology it varies from service and aircraft but this is pretty much what you get in there you get the basic information you get your targeting information your target designator box or TD box you get your uh, your alpha your Mach number your G you get your speed on the left it really is set up so that there's no negative transfer you always have altitude on the right and you always have your compass ribbon on the top what's really neat is you get a digital information display about your actual heading so you can see that you're tracking or at least your heading and then down there you've got time to target and range down in the bottom right. Uh, 
And it looks like this also tells you what you're in air-to-air -air mode. You have the AIM-9 and it's armed. So it's good stuff. Uh, how this compares to DCS World, I don't think DCS is authentic as this yet. Uh, and of course, DCS is not going to show anything that's classified. They don't have access or the authorization to show that. Uh, so if you guys know anything classified, don't put it in a comment because we will come out and have to kill you. After I did the test and flew it, I ejected. Uh, and I hate doing that, but I ejected for science and uh, for, for testing. I'm a ejection seat test pilot now, I guess. But when I ejected, I found out that the pilot model is still the old F-15 pilot model uh, from the old days, from the early days of Fl Fl uh, Flaming Cliffs 3. And so that's probably something they're going to work on. I did this in the Hornet a few months back, and I'll link that video in the description below. Uh, but pretty much, it's pretty neat. The Hornet pilot looks really good on the ground, and I'm hoping the Viper pilot gets there too, and I'm sure it will. Uh, if you guys have any information on that, uh, if Nine Line or Big New are watching, if you guys have any info, just go ahead and comment here. We really appreciate your guys' feedback and constant news. That's all I've got, guys. Appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for putting up with me on this video. Uh, again, if you thought it was entertaining or informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you in the next video. This is Juice, out.